Welcome to the Remembering Akron podcast. I'm your host, Derek Maxfield, and today my guest is Beverly Summy. Welcome, Beverly. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's nice to meet you. So let's get your story. You were born in Batavia. Yes. Were you born in a hospital or were you born at home? Hospital. Okay. In 1949, that is uh, just at the beginning of the Korean War. So you are a, a baby boomer, huh? Post-war baby? Sort of, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> Did you have anybody in your family that was in World War II? Uh, no, I was... No, just after that. Okay. Tell me about your parents. Oh, my parents come from a long line of Akronites. Um, my mother's maiden name was Eddie, or Edie, E-A-D-I-E. And my dad, uh, Hubert Eldred... Eldred is a long name to a historical who's who in Akron. So okay, tell me a little bit about their backgrounds. Where where did uh, you said they were both long time Akronites? Right. Do, uh, do you know the uh, genealogical history of those families? No, I really don't. Uh, there's English Irish descent on both sides. Okay. Um, I really could not tell you, like as far as going back to ancestors, but. They were both born in Akron. I see. Raised in Akron. All right. What did your dad do for a living? He worked at the uh, Gypsum, the Certainty, uh, National Gypsum. Okay. The uh, quarry. Before he passed away, yes. Okay. Mm hmm. And uh, how many siblings did you have? I had six. Well, okay. <laughs> For today, that's a big family. Yes, yeah. Uh, compared to the 19th century, when people are having 12, 14, oh, 16, gosh. that's small. Right. So you grew up in the Akron area. You uh, graduated from high school in Akron then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorite memories of high school? Oh, I loved all my memories. <laughs> I liked school in general. Okay. I was the first uh, class that moved from... I started kindergarten at the library, a half day, and then we moved to the high school in first grade, but just for a half a year, mm -hmm. and then the brand new elementary school was built. So I believe that would have been 1956, I believe, so we okay. moved there. So we were the first graduating class from the new auditorium. Nice. So, so you graduated in 56 then? No, went to start first grade. Oh, okay. Graduated in 1967. 1967. Mm -hmm. All right. So you would have been in school when Kennedy was assassinated. Yes. Do you remember that day? I remember being in the locker room and getting the announcement over the news. We were all, you know, on the PA system. We were just all shocked, very sad. I think it might have been the first time I've ever seen my mother cry. Really? Like, you know, when I got home, she was just, I just think it affected everyone so different. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, the fact that it was largely on television and recorded oh, by right. film had a lot to do with it, right. too. Right. Yeah. And my family was Catholic, so, yeah. you know, being a Catholic, he <laughs> sort of struck First a special Catholic place. First Catholic president and, of the yeah, United States. Yeah, my mother's heart, you know. And yeah. she wasn't a political person at all. Yeah. You know. Well, a lot of people got caught up in Camelot, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, you also uh, grew up at a time of the Vietnam War. Did you have anybody affected by that war? Uh, well, my fiancé was drafted but did not go to Vietnam. Um, many of my friends got drafted, you know, during that era. I mean, the draft was, was scary. Mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah, not a good time. Mm -hmm. So did you, uh, what did you do straight out of high school? I, uh, I became a secretary and worked at Whiting Roll Up Door. Okay. And then married a year later, so started her family. <laughs> so you got married kind of young. Like oh, very. Nineteen. Yeah, Nineteen. I see. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, started. Which was a the thing to do back then. Right. If you exactly. didn't go to college, you got a job and or got married. <laughs> okay. Became a homemaker. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two children. Two. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about them? Two daughters. Um, both are school teachers. One is a French teacher, and the other is a first grade teacher. Okay. Are they both still in the area, or did they? Yes, they fly? both live right here. Nope. Really? Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Yes. So many young people in Western New York don't stick oh, yeah. around. No, I know. I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I understand that you have uh, been associated with the Saint Teresa's Roman Catholic Church for some time. Mm -hmm. 
You, you're active in their women's guild. I was. Tell you know, me about just that. Just for a short time. Okay. Uh, we just helped, you know, make raise money and do things for the church. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. somehow you got involved in the history community in Akron. Oh, uh, yeah. How is it that you fell into that? I think I've always liked history, but back in 1992, I was I owned a store. And Tell me about that first. This the is the store? bag and barrel. Yeah, the bag and barrel. That was my love. Um, I've since retired, obviously, but in 1985, I opened it after having oh, many part-time jobs working out of my home. I decided I'm going to go out into the world, and so I was out for a walk one night and noticed people inside of the old, what was known as the Sherwood Hardware Store. It had always been called that. And they were working, and I'm thinking, wow, I wonder what they're doing with that. So I knocked on the window and said, what are you doing? They said, oh, we're just going to modernize it and rent it out because they, too, tried to hold a, a new hardware store. But it didn't work out for them because now you've got chain stores and everything else, so they didn't last long. So anyway, I said, oh, I said, well, how much are you going to modernize it? And he says, oh, we're going to put carpet and I go oh I said could you stop I said if you stop I might be interested in renting it and he said really I said yes but I want everything intact so I said I'll let you know tomorrow so he talked it over and decided yes that's what I wanted to do so yeah. I rented they gave me the one big main room of the store and it still had the wainscoted ceilings and walls and uh, the wooden floors so I was very excited and I opened yeah. up my store so it had a lot of character then. Yes, and I didn't want to lose it. And that building is so rich in history, It's and people don't even realize that, and it's mm -hmm. a shame. I kept it intact, but after my retirement, you know, the new owner has not made that happen. I see. So what kind of a store was it? It was a, started off as an old-fashioned. I wanted it to be like a country store, candy Oh, goodies, you know, little trinkets or whatever. Mm -hmm. But And I did most of my own craft work, but it soon evolved into buying more because I wasn't able to continue to make it. And my clientele became bigger and bigger and more and more. And so mm -hmm. next thing I knew, I'm full-fledged um, home decor. And in the end, I would say I was the largest store um, probably in... Erie County that sold country goods, furnishings, and decor. Wow. Certainly the largest one in Akron. And it lasted for 25 years. That's a good run. Yeah, it was. Yep. And we you know, ended up buying the building. Behind the building, there was a three-story barn, which was awesome. And, you know, five apartments in that building. So wow. beautiful building. Yeah. A lot of rich history in the building. It was the uh, second building that Jonathan Russell built from, you know, the forefather of Akron. Okay. And um, so why did you decide to retire and sell? Divorce. Uh, I see. <laughs> not, a, not a pleasant time. That'll do it. Yeah. But um, with me, I brought a lot of great memories and I still run into people all the time that remember the store I just did today on the way in. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. So we were talking about uh, you getting into the history community here and that <clears throat> we got sidetracked, but still the this country store sounds like it was, you know, a very historical building. And, well, I think uh, that's why. And, you know, I'd like to just, if I can, just go back there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, upon taking over more than one room of the store and growing and growing until I eventually bought the building. And when we got to the one room to remodel, <clears throat> it was, you could tell it had never been touched. Like it just, they must have always used it for storage. And, of course, I remember as a child growing up, it was the Sherwood Hardware Store. And that was, I mean, anybody that knows history, the Sherwood Hardware Store was just, wow. You know, it was mm -hmm. the, the hardware store. But anyway, um, I love the building and I like the history. But while removing some old paper and whatnot off the wall to expose the wooden walls, it fascinated me that the one room way in the back had beautiful wide molding around the ceilings, mm. cold molding. And, <laughs> and I couldn't understand, like, why just this one room? It's a very primitive looking building. Why that? And then upon tearing off more layers, I found that there's beautiful wallpaper 
in wallpaper, and cold molding just didn't tie into that building. So anyway, taking that off, I found old uh, paper bags that came from Akron Cement Works, which goes back to the 1800s, and it's like, so I became deeply involved at that time. And then um, in later years, uncovered the fact that a German immigrant owned that store. His name was, his last name was Vroom, V-R-O-O-M. And he was a furniture maker and undertaker on the side, which was very common. (laughs) Yeah. And thus that room is where he would lay people out. Oh, really? And he also made coffins. (laughs) So in that process of uncovering the, the wood on the staircase, I'm reading a sign, and I'm piecing it together, which was all cut up in like a triangular shape for the staircase. And I'm like, what is that? I could never figure it out. And you could see, you knew it was furniture. So I thought, okay. And then it dawned on me. I saw O-O-M, R-O-O-M. So it had to be room furniture. And then in, in going back in other pictures, I could see that same kind of writing on things. So... So anyway, I figured he must have cut up his old sign or somebody did and mm-hmm. used it in in that building of the back staircase. And then one day at auction, when now I'm involved with the historical society and acquired a household of furnishings, a table came up for auction and the auctioneer couldn't even get a dollar bid on it. He says, oh, come on, people, just give me a dollar here. And so found the young man that was working for him said, I'll give you a dollar. So he said, okay, who's going to bid you know, more? And he tried to raise it up. Nobody would bid. So he said, okay, sold for a dollar. When the young boy picked it up, he picked it up with the bottom facing the crowd. And as he's walking through the crowd, I see Vroom, Akron, New York, on the bottom of the table. I almost died. I said, oh, my gosh, I want that table. So I ran after him. I said, I have to have that table. He goes, no, (laughs) you didn't want it. I go, please, I'll give you $2. He said, no. I said, okay, free. He said, no, give me 10 I said, I'll give you 5 He said, okay. (laughs) So I got this table that was sold in my store. That's neat. Isn't that neat? Now, did you come across any um, funerary artifacts? No. No. Nothing like that. Interesting. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that is a really cool story. Yeah, I love it. Yep. So you became uh, a member and then even more involved in the Newstead Historical Society. And, mm, uh, from head to toe, then yeah. I jumped in totally. That became my real love, I guess. Um, and you're still involved today? In a different manner now. Um, but yeah, they came to me. The lady that was uh, doing the same job before me passed away suddenly one afternoon. And uh, so the board didn't know quite what to do, how they were going to finish this Octagon house, and because it was basically at that point just gutted. So anyway, I this said... This is the rich <clears throat> twin house? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I said I would see what I could do, and of course, I'm in my, maybe at that point, 1992, I would have been like 40. So to those members, I was just a young thing. <laughs> Not to be trusted because I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. And, but the average member there was between 70 and 80 at that point. A lot of... Very common these days mm-hmm. with historical societies. Not a lot of young blood. No. And there was one man in particular that, that worked there full time. He was the only paid person. And uh, so he would work there. And so now I come on the picture and he told me right out, you know, don't be thinking you're going to come in here and move things or change things. And, so, okay, but every Wednesday on my day off, I would go there and just to clean the house because it was no more than a pile of plastered dust and globs of plaster hardened on the floor. There was no woodwork. Um, the plaster had just been finished, but everything else was gutted, no flooring, no, you yeah. know, we were walking around on timbers. and So anyway, but I continued on with giving tours and teaching people and training docents to give tours and... Um, I finally made up my mind if I'm going to have this job, I'm going to jump in and do it right. So I did, um, <laughs> educated myself through, you know, <clears throat> books and everything I could read. And the lady that died, her husband was just didn't want to let anything go, anything that she had. So I had nothing to work with. And I kept saying there must be, but he just wouldn't work with me. He was just heartbroken. 
So it took many years, and, and he finally warmed up to me, as did the man that worked in the house. And I just, one day I said to him, the man that worked there, I said, look, I said, I'm going to start decorating, so you need to empty out this room. It was filled with saws and buckets of empty plaster, and you know, he was a hoarder to begin with, so it was just loaded. And he goes, well, what am I going to do with it? I go, I don't know. You'll have to figure it out. I said, I'm ready to start. Well, what do you think you're going to do? And I says, well, we'll find out next week. Have it ready. <laughs> and I left. And he did have the room emptied out for me, and we got things out of storage, and I did decorate one room. Still didn't have woodwork, but that's how it began. And then slowly I did work and to, to complete the house of its decor. I worked wow. with... Um, Benjamin Moore for color selections. I had access to a lot of wholesale items uh, through my business, wallpaper and curtains. And I was also responsible for uh, raising money uh, by dealing with people directly that wanted to donate. And they started donating beautiful things for the Octagon House and giving more and more tours and completing the house and, you know, Wow. And you yourself came dire became director one day. Well, yeah, right away at that oh, point. I see. Um, started off with the, the then president of the Historical Society came in and said, so, yeah, I think you can help us, huh? And I said, well, I'll try. She says, well, we'll see about that. She says, we have our first meeting tonight. You show up. And I go, okay. And I was so nervous. And she says, and don't be late. And I said, oh, no, I won't. And she said, you can write. Or, no, she left. I started to walk out my door, and she said, as a matter of fact, you can be our secretary. I said, oh, no, no, I, I don't want to be secretary. I'll just come and help. What, you can't write, she said. <laughs> I said, well, yes. Yeah. She goes, okay, you'll be our secretary. So I got thrown in to becoming their secretary right away that night. And just lovely old people, but I'm telling you, I've learned more from, I'll take it to my grave with me with everything that I've learned from these wonderful old people that took me under their wing and shared their stories of Akron, and it was just beautiful. I mean, I, I love every, each and every one of them, and I could see it changing. Um, but anyway, the man that lost his wife um, warmed up to me and finally started bringing me boxes and boxes of stuff and crinkled up old papers, notes. You know, I guess Sally, it was her name was Sally McLeod, and I guess she thought she was going to be there forever, so she didn't take good notes. Hmm. But in a box of crumpled up papers, I did find the application to be put on the National Register. Oh. So thank goodness I had it and then contacted them and worked directly with the Department of Interior. And not only did we get listed on the state register, but the national. Nice. Yeah. And what year was that? Oh, gosh, I knew you were going to ask me that because I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that something? It was, I guess the date to me was unimportant. All right. But anyway, um, yeah, very, very proud of that. I mean, and it wasn't me alone. I don't mean to imply that because yeah. there were a lot of hardworking people. But I will say that I was the person holding the reins for a while, long while, 17 right. years, 19 years, something like that. Yeah. So you've retired from that job? Yes. New young blood came in that thought they could do it better. And uh -huh. I was going through that terrible time of my divorce. And oh. I thought, I don't need this. And so I reluctantly walked away. It was the silliest thing I ever did in my life. I'm much stronger today and I never should have done that. But How long ago was that? Hmm, probably nine years ago. All right. Yeah. So, but it's still very near and dear to my heart. But, you know. Awesome. Yeah. So, well, let's let me give you one last question, probably the hardest of all. Oh boy. So let's say <laughs> that two generations from now, one of your grandchildren is talking to their children. Uh -huh. You're not here anymore. Yeah. What would you hope that your grandchildren would say to their children about you? Hmm. They probably knowing them would probably just think that one of them calls me Nana and the other two call me Mimi. And they would probably just say that Mimi would have had that done for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sort of a person that just goes and takes charge and I does see. it. So I'm sure they would have just been thinking if Mimi were here, she would do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I don't know what else. I mean, you know, I think that they know that my love is decorating. They always say, don't leave it laying around or Mimi will decorate it. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, on that note, thank you, Beverly, for joining us. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for listening in, and remember to tune in to the next episode of Remembering Akron. 